lots of things to review and show today. Greetings, KSP to player. Are you ready to take off? Did you know you only have six clicky buttons to work with? Pull up. No, that's too much. You're going to stall. Ah, you found the caps lock precision control. Did you know you can use a joystick for better control? You forgot that your precision control was on. Just watch this video and we will explore all the options you have. Introducing Input Binder by Stopfrag. If you're here just for the VJoy and Stream Deck setup, then just go to the next chapter. As always, we just open from the app tray. I have tested this with the A320 Airbus joystick. I've also tested it with the Logitech game controller and also a homemade rotary knob thing with button clicks. So it's a three button left, right, and a click button. I made this a few years ago for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It controls my autopilot functions and frequency for communications. For your first binding, I would suggest doing it in space with a capsule. It'll make learning a little simpler in zero G as it'll show any small errors that you have. One of those small issues will show up right as soon as we start binding our first axis. At the moment, our craft is all stable and our joystick does nothing. Our throttle does nothing and none of the buttons are connected to anything either. For our first binding, we are going to do our pitch. So we just click on the expand button. And we have our defaults, which is the W and S. We have another set that we can program. And below that is our axis for our variable control. And that's the one we are using right now. So we are going to click rebind. And then we are just going to push the joystick in the direction of pitch. Now the issue mentioned, if we just start to watch the nav ball, we're gonna notice that we are starting to slowly tumble. Now the cause for this is a joystick at center doesn't always send zero. You can get some small little superfluous signals coming through. Now to make this all rock solid stable, we're gonna have to use some of the processor functions and clean our signal up. Now this is where we are going to click on the processors button for our axis and click the add. There's a lot of different net processors depending on which axis or button or two dimensional axis that you're trying to connect to. For this case, we want the axis dead zone. So we click add. This one for me and some other people, it was a little confusing. I thought I had to zero out just the dead section, the negative something to positive something that I wanted to be zero. But in reality, the axis is actually mirrored from positive to negative. So we only care about the positive value as the values are gonna be mirrored over to the negative side. So an example of what I did first time, I did negative 0.121. And if I hit save, we're gonna see we start tumbling out really quick. So we're gonna remove that and we are really quickly just going to stabilize our craft here. Then we will just add a new dead zone. What I found on my joystick is a 0.05 to one is the best numbers. Each joystick is gonna be a little different. So what I would suggest for starting out is say 0.1 to one. And if you have way too much play in the center of your joystick, then just start dropping the number down. And now you can see that we are totally stable. So what it is doing is anything less than 0.1 gets set to zero. Anything greater than one gets set to one. And now that cleans up all our signals for our center dead zone area. You may find that some joysticks go up into two. So you might have too much play in the end of your stick travel. So then you're just going to have to modify the dead zone to be a max of maybe two. So far with all my testing, I found a zero to one range on joysticks seems to be standard. So now we are going to really quickly replicate this for our roll and our yaw. So we're going to go into our roll, hit rebind, 
and roll is normally left right but on a rocket it's a twist so we're going to twist that and then we're going to hop into our processes add and make a new dead zone and we're going to put in point one two one hit save Anytime you see that save, click it. We're going to show you what happens next if you don't. So if we now go to our yaw, we're going to rebind and push our stick in yaw and go into processors, add, access dead zone, and we're going to set our basic values. And then we're not going to hit save. We're just going to hit back. We go to the add screen. And if we go back again and again, we can see it never actually applied it like it did the other ones. It should be showing an axis dead zone. So we go back into processors, add the dead zone, put our default values back in that we find that works for your joystick, hit save. Once you've saved it, it is there. The next one that we're going to do for demonstrations is our throttle. There's a few different throttle settings. There's throttle delta, that's your control and shift R. There's also the cutoff and the max. That's the X and the Z keys. What we're going to be using here is just the default basic throttle, and it'll have a blank device one and device two. So let's hit rebind, and we're going to slide our slider. And you can see it comes in, and our throttle is now working. There's a small little issue, though. Dial knobs and sliders, I find, work differently for different ones. So for this particular slider, if I go all the way down, it's at 100, all the way up is 0, and so it's reverse for one. For the other bit, if you notice here in the top, nothing is actually happening. All of the throttle is happening in the bottom. So we're going to use our remap so we can expand the range of motion and also invert it so that it's going in the right direction for us. So let's go into processors and add a map. So it appears that zero to one on one side works great, but we're missing the other side of it. So it's probably going to be a negative one to one. And that's what I found it to be with playing around with it for a little bit. So that's what we're going to put in for the in. That's what's coming from the slider itself into the input binder. And the output is what KSP is actually expecting it to be. So our throttle works at 0 to 1 and hit save. And let's give it a little test. We can see up at the top, if we wiggle it a little bit, it is coming in. There is no dead zone. So let's test the other side at the bottom. And there's no dead zone there. So we have a full range of motion. It's still backwards, so we're going to do that next. There is multiple ways that you can flip something depending on what you're doing. There is an invert function and that will do exactly what it says. It will invert the signal. In our case, because we have the map, we can actually just do it right in there all in one step. So all we're going to do is just reverse our output. So instead of zero to one, we're going to go one to zero. And then we click the all important save. And now if we run our slider, it is full range and it is going in the right direction. So all the way down is off and all the way up is full throttle. Now this slider has a little bit of a bug in it. If I go to a perfect 50%, it snaps me all the way down to zero. It's not a problem with the mapping or a dead zone or anything like that or a problem with the uh, mod. It is actually this slider. The other one we're gonna do is do some of our really cool autopilot modes. These ones, to my knowledge, there is nothing on the keyboard to actually operate these. So we're just going to use buttons and we're going to go to prograde and start really quickly assigning the some buttons. So we'll do retrograde as well. And just for demonstration, we will do stability assist and we're just going to throw that on the trigger. Now we have the awesome ability is we can just click and go to prograde. We can hit our retrograde button, go to retrograde, or we can just lock in stability assist on the fly. And there you go. Now we've got our first binding all done. We've got our throttles, yaw, pitch, roll, and some autopilots. If we engage our rocket, our slider gives us fine precision control within like one in two percent values. This will make your rocket landing so much more precise rather than just the control and shift keys. 
Now to save all of these bindings, the one thing we have to do is we do have to save it. If you do not save, you're going to lose them. If you close the input binder and reopen it, they're still there. But if you close the game and restart KSP, your bindings will disappear. If you only have one binding, you can use save. If you're doing multiple bindings, use save as. This way you know what you're writing it to. In this case, this is for a rocket, because again, rocket is roll and yaw, and whereas a plane is yaw and roll. So we're going to call this rocket, or in my case, just rock. And it is going to tell us that this profile already exists. So we would just hit save. I don't want to do that because I don't want to go over top of my rock profile. We'll call this one rock 55. Um, actually, we should call this rock um, demo. So hit save. And if we go to load, we can see our jet. Um, I also have a rock for rocket. I have alpha, which is the first one that I was learning and got working. And then we also have our new rock demo as well. So in the case of say like rocket and jet, once you have one made, you can make another one just by changing bindings and hitting save as to create a new one where you don't have to start all the way from scratch. In here, there is also the abilities to say make them default. Um, so when KSP loads up, this is the binding that's going to come in with default. Um, you can also click load buttons to load one if you want to switch. In talking with Stopfrag, he has mentioned that he wants to add in a search field so that we can find the different binding options that we're looking for, just so you don't have to scroll through the list quite as much. One improvement that I think would be really, really great is inside the processors section, having it display a input and output value. So this would be the raw input that it is decoding from the device. And then the output after all the processing has happened. I think if we have those, it'll clear up a lot of the questions about how to set your processor values to get the mapping just perfect. I think another really valid improvement for this is in the profile section to have a button bind option. This way we can bind the loading of a profile to a button on our controllers. And then this way you can swap your bindings on the fly. So this would be really useful for say in landing. Maybe you have one binding for your rocket in flight and one binding that is all set to find precision for landing. One final improvement idea would be when we are in the binding window, when we click on a button or pull an axis to have it actually illuminate that binding option, just this way we know where that function is actually bound to. And this way we can remove all instances of a button and we don't accidentally map a button to two different functions. So with that all said, let's hop over to jet with the jet bindings and see how this all works. Now, we all know the WASD flying, it's all on, all off, it's a little hard to fly with. Um, it will either apply way too much or tear something off maybe. There is the caps lock for fine precision and that does work with the WASD. However, sometimes you need more control, so you have to turn the caps lock off, and then you start getting into the dance of turning caps on and turning caps off, and at some point you're going to get confused and have the wrong one at the wrong time, and you'll either expect to have full control or expect to have fine precision, and either one of those can just tip over and crater right into the runway. I find this a little bit more confusing to try and use than helpful. With the joystick, I have full range of control, but yet I can also go right into the center and do fine precision just by moving it a little bit. Most of my flying is right here in the center. I'm not moving it very much. It's just fine precision little movements. However, I do need full power, full control at some point, so I can pull it all the way back and have that range of motion and it doesn't leave me in fine precision mode where I have to worry about turning that on and off to get fine precision and full range of control. The caps lock fine precision still does operate with the joystick. It will give you high precision on top of high precision. So it's like high precision squared. 
So if that's something that you want to use on your joystick, I would really suggest putting a key bind on your joystick so that you can turn the precision on and off. Introducing Stream Deck by Elgato. For those who don't know, a Stream Deck is a button box that you can program and map to your computer and applications. You can have multiple profiles. Each profile can have multiple pages. Any button can be turned into a folder containing its own single page. Buttons can be made to swap you between profiles. You can even link to a particular page in a profile. Each of the buttons can be made to be a hotkey, an application launcher, set system settings like volume, set up sequences to perform multiple actions. You can set the icons, even making them animated GIFs. There is a ton of plugins that adds a lot of extra capability. Its possibilities are endless and it is not just for streaming. One plugin is just a simple clock. Another one lets me control all of my volumes without having to open the mixer panel. For a basic example, adding something of, let's say, a hotkey for the letter G, we just drag in the hotkey command and then set the key that we want it to replicate. And you can see the Stream Deck updates and replicates any of the changes that I make, and this new key now types in Gs if I push on it. Now, on its own, it is not the best for KSP2. The only function that really helps is the hotkey. Using it to replace your keyboard with just a nice graphical interface is awesome, but as KSP2 uses pretty much the entire keyboard, there's not much room to make custom binds as the shift and control are used, and Alt-W is still read as W. And that is where our next section will help, where we will add in a virtual joystick and a Steam Deck plugin to control it, and that is going to expand us to 8 axes and 128 buttons. Introducing VJoy by Shalias and Stream Deck VJoy by Ashup. To make the Stream Deck emulate a joystick and gamepad, we're going to need a couple things. The links are in the description. First, we are going to go directly to the VJoy download page and we are going to download and install the VJoy tool. Once you have that installed, you will have three apps to test, update, and check your VJoy joysticks. Once I had that installed, the first program that I ran was the demo file, which will look just like this, just you will have less buttons for your first run. And this just gives you a little bit of a testing area so that you can test buttons and slider values. The next thing that I ran is the configuration tool. It is going to ask for permissions and it will take just a moment. Stay on target. Just a moment. Stay on target. Here we go. We can set our virtual joystick and we can create up to 16 different devices. Each one can have up to two three axis joysticks, 128 buttons, two slider or knob controls, and some hat switches. I set mine to 120 buttons and turned off the force feedback as I don't need it and then just click apply and you are good to go. There is also a VJoy device list. This will show you all the devices that you have running with their numerical name. I have had to do a full reboot to fix a unrelated app that was not launching and all of my VJoy devices still worked in KSP2 without having to relaunch anything. This is where those permissions come in because it does modify some of your system info. With our VJoy joystick all set up, let's get our Stream Deck plugin so that we can control it. In the release section there is a VJoy plugin, just click and download that. Then when you run it, it will pop up and launch into your Stream Deck. So you should see the VJoy tools, both a VJoy button and a VJoy toggle. So we will do a little setup demo here. Um, we are going to change our view and bring up our camera to see the Stream Deck itself. So in the upper left camera now, you can see the Stream Deck and what it is showing. This is just for those out there that are not too sure what it is or if they want one. We have gone over the basic hotkey, now instead we are going to drag and add in a VJoy button as well as a VJoy toggle button. And just as with the hotkey button, we do have to set some settings for our VJoy buttons themselves. There is some more settings in here, but once you sit down and read through it, it kind of starts to make sense. 
every VJoy button needs its device ID and you can find that through the device list or the configuration tabs. For our demo, we're going to use device number one and our button of 120 is going to be button 42. For a standard push button, that's all you need to do. The other options for the buttons just give us more capability with more advanced functions, which we will brush on in a little bit. One of my favorite ones in KSP2 is a parking brake, and this is a button toggle. So we're going to add in device one, and I actually use button number three. And this is just as it sounds. It's a toggle. So when it's on, it's going to continuously send out button three. When it's off, it won't. Where I could set this up as a toggle with the B key, but that would be bad because I'd be spamming B, and any time that I tap on anything else, it would just be printing B all the time. And to make it a little cooler, we're going to go in and set the icon. I have the free flight simulator icon set, which is great. I'm going to use the parking brake icon and set one for on and one for off. And once I find the parking brake icon, all I need to do is click on the off version, which would be the one with the red, then use the toggle button to go to the on and set the on icon. And now as I click this on my stream deck, you can see that the icon switches to reflect its state. And now I don't have to worry about holding down my B for my brakes or using the mouse to click the brake icon. I can just lock my brakes with my stream deck or any other functionality you would like in a similar manner. For some more advanced functions, we're going to add three standard VJoy buttons. We're going to set them all to device ID one, but now we set the button drop down to be X axis instead. One button we're going to set to be step up by 100 on click and on release do nothing. The other one will be step down by 100 on click and on release do nothing. And our third button will be set to on click and release to go to center. So this will let you control a missing axis through buttons but have full range of motion and have precision. I have one setup that is doing something similar where I'm physically setting the value to a custom value and that can run my throttle from full to cut in 25, 50, and 75. It just took me a little while to find all the values which I'm going to put up on screen now. So for anyone wanting to do the same thing, you have the values. Introducing Pico Pi by Raspberry Pi. The coders and makers out there, there is also Pico Pi. I made Mr. Nobby 2020 four years ago, so I don't remember every step, but it was very simple following the videos online for making a game controller with a Pico Pi. If you've done anything with an Arduino, then you can totally do this, and if you haven't, it's not that hard to learn. And don't be bothered if it doesn't look cool. Maybe it's just a bunch of knob controls and a rat's nest held together by a Tupperware sandwich box. The real important part is that you make things and learn. Introducing Universal Control Ray Mapper by Snoothy. For the adventurous, there is Universal Control Remapper. This will let you map two controls into one control. It can also be useful with the Stream Deck allowing you to map a control for your joystick to a VJoy control while having buttons on the Stream Deck able to modify that axis. So when I get this one all figured out, this might allow me to mix my throttle control between the slider on my joystick and the VJoy buttons on my Stream Deck. And even just for any game that uses game controllers, this would allow you to mix two controls into one VJoy control system, so then you don't have to switch controllers. As far as your game is concerned, the gamepad and the joystick are both just VJoy controller one. I am finding some cases where I actually want a combination function in the Stream Deck and I want it to control something that the Stream Deck controls, but I also want it to toggle something that I have a button on my joystick for. So in the case of maybe I only have one binding available, being able to remap everything through the VJoy system and have one singular device could be really, really powerful. And something to dream about. A work in progress by TrekFan42, known as Stream Deck KSP to do flight control main. TrekFan42 is working on something really cool, and I cannot wait for it. And it is a Stream Deck plugin for interfacing directly with KSP2. So not only do we have buttons like we set up today, 
but it actually gets data from the game. So if you change a setting inside the game with your mouse or keyboard, the Stream Deck is going to display that. But not just that, it would also be able to display the Apogee and Perigee values, the power and mono propellant levels, uh, even displaying the time warp graphics. I just, I cannot wait for this thing. So shout out support for TrickFan42 for this. It is a work in progress. Like so many of us, he has a full-time job and his own hobbies, and he is also making his own game. So his time is pretty spread, but I am really hopeful that we can have this someday. Maybe. Please? Pretty please? My Stream Deck setups are still new and still changing, but so far at the moment on my first page is all of the bits that I need for regular flight. Page 2 is basically just all of the action groups. Page 3 is everything for standard keyboard rocket flight. Page 4 I am setting up as an EVA page. Page 5 is a little experimental, but mostly going to be all of the VAB building functions. The next two pages is all of the SAS and RCS settings, and this is what you get brought to from any of the SAS or RCS buttons. And everybody needs a junk page here and there. And the last page has all of my throttle presets for when I am using that input profile. So we are on the runway with the stock jet. First we are going to set our parking brake. Then engage our engine. And we're going to give the Weasley a little bit to spool up as it likes to take its time until it actually has any power. Now we disengage the brake. And away we go on our first flight in KSP2 with the stock jet using our joystick, stream deck, and V-Joy. I'm getting some good speed, so let's pull up just a tad. And to infinity and beyond we go. Now if I let go, normal keyboard flight is it's just going to start diving into the ground. Now let's level out and bring in our landing gear. Just like a real plane, now we are airborne. We are going to start to set our trim so we can have some level flight. And perfect, no hands. We will time accelerate this in editing while we head out and turn around for a landing. And getting some pretty decent speed, so we're actually going to turn around twice just so that we can drop off all of our extra speed. Now just get in and start lining ourselves up for a landing with the runway. There we go. And drop the landing gear. And we're just going to slowly start adding some more trim as we slow down and get back to real time. I'm just trying to keep myself on the glide slope and kill as much speed as I can so I don't tip over when I land. And thinking about landing, we are going to turn on our brakes. Still way too fast to try and land, so let's try and bleed all this energy off here. I just want to get below 70 before all chance of landing with the physics engine. Things still seem way too bouncy in KSP2 to me. And we should be starting to stall and drop right about now, I think. And touchdown, and pray that those brakes are set right. So the landing is a little long, but as to my previous record, that you can see in the Life of Kerbals, I started playing KSP1 on PS4, so I can't fly with clicky keyboard keys. I just can't fly without a joystick. Well, it was a lot of reviews and info today, and hopefully this is a mod that'll be for you, and maybe some of the other information even changes how you're going to be setting up your game pads for other games. Hope you enjoyed. I'm going to leave you with all of my failed takeoff and landing attempts, all mixed to a classic. So, game on, eh?